Hey, what's up guys? This is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. This video is a little bit less of a tutorial and more of like, hey, if you run into this, here's the issue. I found like a, a small bug or maybe it's a feature according to Adobe. I don't really know, but it's in Illustrator when you're dealing with blending modes. What you see on screen is me testing a bunch of different things, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. You see, I was gonna create a Long Shadows tutorial, and I will now, uh, now that I know what's going on here, but if you look on here, there's this little like weird shape thing with the letter A. Now these are blends, and if you don't know how to do a blend in, uh, in Illustrator, I actually have a tutorial on that. I'll try to post it in the description if I remember, um, but you'll kind of see how to do it in this. But anyway, this all has to do with blending transparency, blending like opacity. So something from 100% opacity down to 0% opacity. And that's a lot of how, that's, that's one way of how people create long shadows on like flat designs in Illustrator. Um, but I was running into a problem where it wasn't blending the opacity and I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was like just a general Illustrator problem, but I started to get it to work in some different cases. And one thing led to another. Anyway, so what? how this all started was I typed a letter, right? Like the letter A. Type the letter A. I'm going to make that a little bigger so we can see it. And I was going to do a long shadow tutorial. Um, actually, I'm going to show you what. I was going to do a long shadow tutorial with the dollar sign. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to make this a shape. So I'm going to do shift command or shift control O to outline that. Now, clearly, I just have a shape, right? I can I have a fill, opacity, everything. So now I wanna make it uh, like a shadow, so dark and a gradient to transparent of the same shape. So I was gonna duplicate it, holding Option or Alt, bring it down here. And now this one, obviously, okay, it's gonna end being zero opacity. So I type in zero to my opacity. Now I have this uh, full opacity down to zero. I just need to blend that together. And the blend mode's pretty cool in Illustrator. So I go up to Object, down to Blend, and I go to Blend Options first. I make sure it's what I want. I go Specify Distance, One Pixel, all good. Hit OK. Now I gotta actually go make the blend. So I go back to Object, down to Blend, Make. That's like Option Command B or Alt Control B if you're on PC. I hit Make. And it does this. And this is where I was like, hmm, what did I do wrong? I must have forgotten how to do this. No, all those steps are perfectly fine. It's just this small little bug or glitch in Illustrator where if it is a grouped compound path, it will not blend transparency. If it is a grouped compound path, it won't blend transparency or opacity, whatever you want to call it. A grouped compound path. Like it can be a compound path or it can be a group, but it can't be a grouped compound path. Now, where do you run into this? You run into this when you outline text. So I could do the same thing with the letter A, just type the letter A, uh, make it really big, like 100. Uh, that wasn't as big as I thought it was gonna be, but here's my letter A, right? Now I go create outlines, which I can do down here with my quick actions in the new properties panel. It creates an outline, but because it's got like this cutout space and because I created outlines, it made it a group and a compound pass. So when I duplicate this and turn the opacity down, uh, that's not how do you turn it down, zero, okay? And do that blend again. Uh, actually, I'm gonna select them this way. It doesn't. It doesn't work. But if I were to back up, and now I just got this A, and I uh, ungroup him. So now it's just a compound path. I can do the same thing. Duplicate him out here. Zero percent. Select both. Make that blend. And that's what I was expecting to happen. Was it would go from one to the other, and blend. And then what you do is you kind of like, you, you make this thing like 15% and it sort of disappears. And then through the different preview modes, it, it looks less and less choppy. But if you were to export this, uh, notice how choppy it looks, by the way. See how you can see like every step of this. If you export this, it's gonna be a lot better of a blend. Um, I know a lot of people complain about that. But anyway, that's not here nor there. The important part is, you can blend together, that's what all these are, is me trying to figure out, okay, if I group it like this here, see this group of two squares? That blends opacity just fine. 
Um, there was something else around here that I tried. Yeah, I don't have it anymore. But anyway, uh, you can also do compound paths just fine. Obviously, we just we just showed you that here, right? It, it's a compound path because like there's a little section that's knocked out in that A, but it blended just fine. But what you can't do is a compound path within a group. So weird. I know this is probably such a small scenario for anybody, but I ran into it and I thought, why don't I just make a video and tell people about what I just figured out? Uh, because I don't want to necessarily keep it to myself, right? And if anybody else runs into this, like I think that especially with outlining text, that's one area that I could definitely see people running into. Um, so what you would need to do, I guess, is ungroup this. Can't ungroup the objects, okay. Um, I don't know how you would ungroup. No, can't. Okay, but basically that's what you do. So, so in the tutorial that I'm going to create, um, I'm actually going to type this out, make it a, a dollar sign, and then, so I'll show everyone. Hey, you have to, you have to outline this, and then you've got to ungroup it. And once it's ungrouped, you're good to go. You can dupe it. 0%, select one, select the other, and make that blend just fine. Real interesting. Um, honestly, this isn't even, so just for those who are still listening, this isn't even how I like to do the, um, f the flat design like long shadows anymore. Um, mainly because like if you look at this, this will be something I actually talk about. The way this is so like compound and it has all these concave and convex, I don't know which is which anymore. It's been too long since I've taken math, but uh, the way that that works, now you see the shadow is kind of weird, right? Like the way it kind of been, I mean, it's kind of cool, like 3D, but it's not really what I would want if I was creating a shadow. I would want kind of like a flat shadow with a gradient through it. Um, I don't know if it has to do with this being on the bottom. Yeah. So if you take it to the top, that little piece, now you get this this section here that's sort of like this half pipe thing kind of dips in and out. Whereas for me, I, I think I would want something that's more like, um, see if we can't just copy paste this guy. I would want something that maybe starts oh, up here, kind of go down here like this, and we'll go to this corner, and then we're out this way up this way and this isn't how I would make it but something like this um, drop that to the back and then you make a gradient on this guy from one to the other come on buddy alright and he would go alright this is getting extended here but gradient options I would go from black to black the second black we would do 0% opacity I would do this differently, but and then you can adjust the angle of this gradient um, like so, and you can sort of move that around. Anyway, I would do something like that, and then we would take the opacity way back to like 15%, and now you have this sort of long shadow coming out from, from that thing. Um, it's not created in the best way, but then after that, basically you can select these two and sort of move it around if you wanted to sort of move it around. Anyway, so that's sort of the difference uh, between the two. I can bring this over here and show you guys. Uh, and then we can bring this opacity down. Same thing. So that's how, that's, that's you know, two different versions of sort of like creating a long shadow. Um, the difference here is like, there's a couple differences here. All of a sudden I'm, get, I'm getting into this other tutorial, but I just wanted to keep talking. So like, you don't see the shadow from on this side of the dollar sign, whereas over here you do because of the angle of the shadow. It would start here and kind of come down. Whether you want that or not, a lot of flat designs just hang on like the right side of the design, um, so you wouldn't see it on this left side. The other thing you don't get is because of the shape of, of this dollar sign, you get this weirdness in the shadow where it's almost like this 3D effect. Um, you know, if you like that, if it's cool, you can do that. But 
at the same time, a lot of designs are flat. And one of the things a lot of people talk about is the choppiness of this. All you have to do now, because Illustrator just doesn't render it as well as it used to, um, when you export this, when you save it out as a PNG or something, it, it looks fine. Uh, it's just choppy when you're inside of Illustrator so that um, Illustrator loads things quicker. You know, It doesn't want to uh, hog all of your CPU or GPU, depending on which preview mode you got it on. Um, that's pretty much it. You see it's also on the shadows on this left side here, which can interfere with this point here. You know, it's almost like maybe you would just want it to start there. I don't know. That's it, you guys. Uh, just a little little thing about, um, about blending modes and blending opacities, and maybe it's something you run into. If you guys have any questions or if you, I don't know, figure something out, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if this was helpful or something interesting, at least. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials, <laughs> and I'll see you guys later.